30 years ago, the people of China dared to hope for a democratic future. Millions of Chinese, for the first time, maybe the last time in their life, taste freedom in the air of Beijing. But on the night of June 3, 1989, the People's Liberation Army turned its guns on the people. We didn't think they'd use lethal weapons. I can't imagine anyone in the West using live ammunition against their own children. We realized it's a war. They're out to kill us, not to scare us. Thousands have been killed and injured, victims of a leadership that seems determined to hang on to the reins of power at any cost. Three decades on, the Chinese government is determined to erase the memory of the Tiananmen Massacre. We were so young and we experienced such a violent killing. We were not allowed to openly shed a tear or light a candle for the dead. The momentous events of that spring were captured by the ABC in a trove of historic footage. The tanks, the armoured personnel carriers... We watched in horror as the full force of the Chinese military crushed the democracy movement. Tonight on Four Corners, we look back at the brutal crackdown on the People's Power Revolution and how it changed China forever. suppress news, suppress the truth. Of course, we are struggling for democracy, for, for science, for, uh, for law. China has not seen student demonstrations on this scale since the chaotic cultural revolution of the 1960s. Some observers see the current wave of unrest as the greatest challenge the Communist Party has had to face since it came to power 40 years ago. And the students say they will not give up until their demands for political reform are met. We really need a freedom as a young generation, and we believe democracy can bring freedom. We realize the government cannot do it without any pressure. So I think we must go to the street, give the government pressure, and let the government do some political reform and bring democracy and freedom to China. No, no. There was a sense of hope. We were hoping that uh, with our participation, we can alter the history to a much brighter direction. We want the Chinese Communist Party to fulfill their promises to the Chinese people. Wu Kaishu was a very charismatic leader who, when he spoke, everyone stopped and listened. He was very much in demand. People crowded around him like a rock star. He was definitely one of the prime movers of the whole movement um, towards democracy. People who took to the street in 1989, we didn't do it because of hatred, because of anger, because of grievances. We did it because of love, because of hope, and even in our trust in the government that it will reform itself.
we felt that this is the time, finally, that we could uh, uh, speak out and express our uh, youthful uh, 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 idealism uh, to, to, to do something for the country and to help it to do better. The event that led to the protests, the catalyst, was the death of Hu Yaobang, the former general secretary of the Communist Party, who had been purged some years before for his liberal ideas. But they were the kind of liberal ideas that appealed to the students, a greater say for the people, an end uh, to a corruption, a greater degree of democracy. The students latched on to the death of Hu Yaobang as an opportunity to vent their feelings about corruption, about a lack of say in the government of the country. Directly from Deng Xiaoping himself, he asked the People's Daily, which is the party newspaper, to print an editorial declaring the students' movements uh, counter-revolutionary rebel. That's a very heavy labeling. When we heard that, we were very, of course, angry, but I think uh, reasonably saying scared at the same time. Six of us called hunger strike, Wang Dan and I are among them. And then it was responded um, well. Uh, the students, initially 2,000, then it became 3,000 students uh, joining the hunger strike troops. Hunger strikers, accompanied by perhaps 10,000 supporters, occupied Tiananmen Square in the center of the city. We must stay here to force the government to answer our, uh, answer our questions and our demands quickly. Hunger strike is the last choice. We actually do not want to take this measure, but this is the last choice. The students felt that we are using our precious life to beg for the government to come out and talk to us and listen to us. I did not want to go on hunger strike. I don't agree with that measure of activism. So I joined the picket line right at the foot of the monument to the people's heroes. Sometimes we join hands protecting the hunger strikers and the student leaders who were sheltered, who were in the tents. We made sure the traffic for the ambulances will be clear for them. And also we wanted to protect the students and the leaders from of foreign media. These days in Beijing, what you hear the siren of ambulance that ache everybody's heart. When you hear the ambulance, you know uh, another hunger striker must have uh, passed out. There were, at times, almost a million people on Tiananmen Square. And there would be ambulance moving in and out every five minutes, for example. It was seemingly chaotic. But at the same time, the students had to keep order uh, because there were no police. That's what I did. I stepped in. So I was not on the hunger strike list, but uh, I was uh, coordinating the effort through this uh, broadcast station on Tiananmen Square called the Voice of the Student Movement. Mm. 
同学们要注意，手在清洁卫生。The announcer would tell us, oh, please do not sleep in. This is not a very good image for the students. Please, uh, you know, pick up your, uh, your rubbish. Uh, and uh, the, we have to uh, keep the square clean and orderly. <laughs> Family父母,我们对门一个 家庭妇女都给那些学生去送水呀, In the past, the citizens just keep silence. They never speak to the government. They never dare to speak to the government. But now, they stand up and came to speak to the truth to the government. We are you see the whole city, people are really full of hopes. A lot of people they come out. You never see this before. People live in fear, suddenly you just realize that people come out. They don't really live in the shadows. They come out with hopes and that they're really trying to get this country changed. Millions of Chinese, for the first time, maybe the last time in their life, taste freedom in the air of Beijing. And we were all bound by this common ideal, you know, dream for a better China. In that brief period, you know, the whole world was riveted by China. So another situation is the, the, the President of the Soviet Union, uh, Gorbachev, visited Beijing, and uh, quite a lot of uh, journalists gathered in, in Beijing, and we think that's a golden chance to let the whole world know we want China to be democracy. China's President Yang Shang Kun and an army of government and Communist Party officials greeted the Soviet leader as he and his wife stepped down from their chartered aeroflot jet. The students protesting on the square, they blocked quite a bit of the ceremony, the pomp and ceremony that Dong wanted to uh, put on for Gorbachev. They couldn't use Tiananmen, so Dong was furious. I think it was probably very significant in that um, it would have hardened his resolve to remove the students in any way that it was necessary. How long have you been fasting? Um, about uh, uh, five days. And how long will you continue to fast? Um, I will continue to, um, uh, until uh, victory. There was a faction within the Communist Party that was sympathetic to the student movement and the students' concerns. 
that faction was led by Communist Party General Secretary Jiao Zi Young. And because of this division within the party, China was indeed paralysed uh, for a number of weeks. Zhao, Premier Li and two other senior members of the ruling Politburo visited hunger strikers in hospital this morning. There are now more than a thousand hunger strikers in hospital and another two thousand in Tiananmen Square. <laughs> The leaders expressed great concern for the health of the students and said they understood the patriotic zeal behind the hunger strike. The government agreed to a televised dialogue, which was an enormous concession between Li Peng, Premier Li Peng, and several of the students led by Wu Kaishi. Wu Kaishi turned up in his pajamas. He'd been in hospital, the effects of the hunger strike. We thought, you know, maybe this meeting is significant. It's a turning point. It's the part that the government is going to say, okay, we heard you. But no, Li Peng came in, gave us a monologue of lecture. They just try to scold us and criticize us and say that this is a turmoil and make everything worse and you have to withdraw from the Tiananmen Square. And he didn't want to listen to any concrete policy suggestion from outside. I was sitting there in my hospital gown and then with oxygen mask and then oxygen tubes into my nose. And I was saying, you know, this is not the dialogue or meeting we were anticipating. This is government putting up a gesture to blame the students. So this is not going to lead to anything we want. Yes, I was firm. I was standing on my position strongly, as my role demands me to at that time. I was quite naive because we don't know the true face of the Communist Party. We never realized that this party will do anything to defend their power. Beijing television viewers were treated this morning to extraordinary images. There was Judd Si Young, boss of one of the world's most powerful political machines, the 48 million strong Chinese Communist Party, down amongst the squalor in Tiananmen Square, pleading with students to end their protest. <laughs> This was the last time, of course, that Jiao Zi Young was seen in public, and we were told by sources that we had very close to the Communist Party and to the government of China that Jiao Zi Young had indeed uh, been purged, that the hardliners had won the struggle for control of China and that the, the reformers, those who sympathised with the students, had lost. <laughs> The Chinese government has decided to impose martial law in some areas in Beijing starting 10 o'clock Saturday morning. The order says the move is taken in light of turmoils in the capital, and it's aimed at restoring social order. We got all that we are going to Beijing to enforce the martial law. Even I graduated from the military college, still I was a student. I have a sympathy with students. Some officers uh, like me still have a sympathy with students. They think democracy is right. We need democracy. 
that time, I think a lot of uh, soldiers or, or officers uh, agree with the so, uh, with the students. It's not Chinese. He used the enemy to, to against the people, against the students. We never expect the people will stand up to protect us. At that night, when the uh, government issued the martial law, a lot of students, including me, think that may be the last day of us. The government will send the military troop to the Tiananmen Square. Martial law troops trying to move in to remove the students, and then all the people said, don't. You're supposed to be the People's Liberation Army. And with years of propaganda that the PLA, People's Liberation Army, are the son and daughters of the people. Tens of thousands of troops were surrounding Beijing. I was not really afraid because uh, I experience people's will every day. You know, there's such overwhelming support for the students. All the people get up, come here, stop the service. I'm sitting in the truck with a lot of soldiers. But the people and the students are very nice. They just tell the truth and what's the democracy just, just tell us and what happens in Tiananmen Square. So they just try to ask to go back, don't go to Tiananmen Square. <laughs> Student is good. Um, we support them. What's amazing to me is that uh, the protests in 1989 brought out the best of human spirit among Chinese. The uh, totalitarian regime corrupts people's mind, moral, and destructs mutual trust. But uh, um, Tiananmen, you know, during that uh, brief period, it was so peaceful. People were just uh, so friendly to each other. Everything that the students and the other protesters, because I were joined by many others, did was under very close surveillance. We learned later that the authorities had turned the road traffic cameras on the protests and protesters, cameras that had been supplied by Australia and Germany mainly. And they were photographing them using those cameras, that all of the restaurants around uh, Tian Tiananmen, where the students used to gather, 
had been wired for both sound and, in many cases, for revision as well. Good evening. This is Radio Beijing's capital service, Amunjie. Message demonstration erupted again Tuesday as Beijing ended its fourth day of martial law. The troops ordered to carry out martial law are still stranded in the suburbs of Beijing. We do not like Li Peng. Do not like the leadership now. Do not like, like Deng Xiaoping. What's going to happen in China? We do not know yet, but we're hoping for the good. We do not like students die. They are the hope of China. Tiananmen Square, where this crisis began with student protests for democratic reform, the numbers have thinned considerably. And one report says that at least 7,000 students have left the square, which now looks for the world like a refugee camp. The crowds were dissipating. Everyone was saying it's all over. Then the students decided to build what they call the goddess of democracy. So it was a plastic and styrofoam replica of the Statue of Liberty, which of course is the very heart of democracy. And here it was about to be taken off to the symbolic heart of Chinese communism. The students have staged yet another act of defiance, bringing the statues several kilometres to their heartbeat of freedom, Tiananmen Square. In the back of your mind all along, there was this sense of, I can't believe they're doing this. The fact that there were hundreds of thousands of troops ringing the city, but they were still prepared to do this. I mean, it's an extraordinary, for want of a better word, provocation to actually have a statue of, uh, of liberty going down to the heart of communism and erecting it in front of Mao Zedong. attempt to get to the square and push the students out. This time the unit uh, ran. They didn't come in vehicles or anything, they ran for kilometres into town from the fringes of uh, Beijing. And of course by the time they got there they were exhausted. But they also ran into people, not students, but into the people who didn't want these army turned against the kids. Amazing as it may seem, People's Power has turned back the People's Army for the second time in two weeks. Even though it was tension in the air, there was no sense that, you know, within hours of that moment, there would be carnage. The troops had got to the points that they were directed to reach and stopped and waited for the order to go in. Deng Xiaoping is the only person who can make that decision at that time. He ordered, uh, he ordered massacre.
I arrived about 4 p.m. on Tiananmen Square, and I can smell tear gas in the air. At that moment, it was the first time for me I realized you know, this is a different evening now. I thought this is the time for me to fight and to die as a revolutionary hero. And then I hopped on the bike and cycled all the way to the square. The students and the civilians of Beijing, they were busy making roadblocks to try to uh, stop the military trucks. It was like going through a war zone. On the night of June 3, we got order from the authorities that says every troop has to go to Tiananmen Square on time with any means. Some soldiers, they think, uh, oh, by any means, with, you give me the uh, gun, you give me the bullets, which means I can uh, open fire. Tank are rolling in down the main thoroughfare towards Tiananmen Square. There's sporadic shooting, automatic weapons opened up, people were diving for cover. We can spot ambulances going in a, a ferry-like fashion, sirens blaring taking people, taking bodies, taking injured people. We thought they would use riot control weapons, rubber bullets, hoses, water, all that sort of thing. We didn't think they'd use lethal weapons. Looking at it, I suppose, from a Western military viewpoint, I can't imagine anyone in the West using live ammunition against their own children. At one of the big intersections, an APC just ran over a, a young girl on a bicycle. And it was charging down anything and everything, barricades, uh, people. And the protesters had put up the steel barricades and at first this APC got stuck and the crowd started gathering around it, hurling in insults and rocks and sticks and everything. And then it revved up and powered off, but it only got a few metres and it, and it really stopped. The crowd climbed up on top of the tank and um, were bludgeoning the people below and they were wrecking the tank and with, with iron bars and wooden bars and bricks and things like that.虽然已经有死者伤者在我们旁边了，那个情绪氛围还没转过来，就是拿有一个学生叫另外他的另外一个学生给他照相，在这地方就部队就在他后面，大概我觉得不到一百米吧，我亲眼看见那个人捅一下
we were hearing gunshots and seeing flyers all around us. Some students brought back some uh, bloodstained shirts describing the killings. And then that's when we realized it's a war. They're out to kill us, not to scare us. All the lights were switched off and we're just waiting. We knew they were going to ambush us. All of a sudden, all the lights in Tiananmen Square were turned on. Uh, then immediately we heard this deafening noise. That was the loudest noise I've ever heard in my life. Uh, the tanks were rolling in uh, from all directions. I saw them flattening the tents on their way. I saw with my own eyes the collapse of Goddess of Democracy statue. Then the tanks uh, stopped at some point, and the soldiers were hiding behind them, waiting. We wanted to live there all the day, but that's impossible. I knew I'm telling the world what's happening in Tiananmen Square, and I knew I could be killed jailed, and any of us talking to the camera could be in trouble. But we did not hesitate to tell the truth to the world. Many soldiers just with their guns and heavy, heavy big sticks pushed us, pushed us, and beat us, and shouted, shouted, get, get away, get away. Do you think anybody got killed? Of course, I'm sure, very sure. Many students were killed. How do you feel right now? Feel right now? I'm very angry. Trucks crammed with troops banked up as they waited for orders to move into the square. At each intersection, shots sprayed from the vehicles. The entire square was like a military compound. There were dozens and dozens of vehicles, tanks and APCs lined up, lots of troops, helicopters coming and going. A column of tanks and armoured personnel carriers was coming out of Tiananmen Square right past our hotel. It suddenly stopped. There was a man holding shopping bags, standing in front of the tank, the lead tank. This man then clambers up onto the tank and squats down and starts remonstrating with the tank commander. He then gets back down again. The tank tries to move, it tries to maneuver around him. And every time the tank moved, the man with his shopping bags in each hand jumped in front of it. Four or five other people on the side of the road rushed over, fearing for his life, obviously, rushed him off, took him over the other side of the road, and he disappeared out of sight, and he disappeared forever. He took a stand. It became one of the most iconic images of the 20th century of all time. He has been an inspiration to so many people. The most obvious thing is to think that, you know, he was caught and captured and killed, um, but we'd all like to think that he melted away into the crowd and he's, he's still out there somewhere safe. Just 弟弟的弟媳妇吧
，然后我在医院里陪了他两天，但我真的心里眼看着他一就是一步步的走上走向死亡。我的儿子来到医院的时候，他已经不行走了，所以我觉得这对我的孩子、对我的家庭，真的一夜之间。就让我的家庭受到这种灭顶之灾啊！其实真的，我心里非常难过。The truth here of the whole 1990s democracy movement are those ordinary people's. The whole international community pay attention to us, but those people they sacrifice their life. Nobody know, even nobody know their name. So they are really the hero. There was a list of 21 of the country's most wanted, headed by Wang Dan, one of the students' leaders. I was only 20 years old, and the uh, whole movement is so broad, I, I don't think it was me who should take this responsibility. And I also don't think uh, I really did a good job to lead this movement. So why they put me on, on the first, I don't understand. I was number two on the list uh, without so much surprise and then I would probably take it as a great honor to be on that list and then to be on that rank. I was ranked number five. I was in shock, but I was also profoundly proud of myself because what I did uh, out of duty as a citizen, as a student, now it was officially recognized uh, by this government uh, you know, as being very important. Uh, I, I have, uh, at that moment, a very strong sense of achievement. The government is in the full scale of the country. The government is in the full scale of the country. 说你在这几天你做了什么？你上街没有？你干嘛也好，就好像这个政府所不单你去杀人，认为是正确的，好像让自己的国民生活在这种恐怖之中，认为都要接受这个六四惨案这一件事情，让所有的人，如果你你你要是参与或者那个什么，就是就是那个监控里有你，那么很有可能你的你自你的生命。The security forces were taking advantage of all the intelligence they collected for weeks, photographs, names, addresses, everything else, and coming around and demanding that the parents give up the student, knock on the door at 2 a.m., give us your son. He's wanted for crimes against the state. And they take him off, and as often as not, what, two hours, three hours later, they'd come back and say he'd died, either trying to escape or he'd fallen downstairs or something. Young people confronting lines of armed troops, not in anger, but in disbelief that an army could unleash force on its own people with such cruelty. Thousands have been killed and injured, victims of a leadership that seems determined to hang on to the reins of power at any cost. In 1989, we were so young and we experienced such a violent killing and witnessing or watching it. And it's literally the killing of your peers, of your generation. But we were not allowed to openly shed a tear or light a candle for the dead. And we carried this wood, this open wood, up to today, 30 years later, and we still are not allowed to openly talk about it. On the surface, Tiananmen seems to be totally remote and irrelevant to the reality of a rising China. But Tiananmen remains the most taboo and most sensitive subject in China today. They just try to cover up the truth. They don't want any people to talk about this one. And they just want people forget to cover, to forget this truth. I would say I live in nightmare. Even now, I get in bed, but I still, still dream of them. Some people killed 
and uh, yeah. The government was determined that there would not be hundreds or thousands of deaths recorded as a result of Tiananmen. So they made the parents to collect the body for a funeral. They made them sign a statement to say that the child had died in an accident. Otherwise, they wouldn't release the body. And so the authorities can now say, look, here's the list of people who actually died at Tiananmen. A couple of hundred, maybe, not thousands. Xiao这么多年，我真的有一个心愿，能在这个位置上去为他送上那个献上送上就献上一束花吧，然后表达我自己的那个一种祭哀思。但是这是不可能的，因为每到这个时间的时候，我完完全全是被监监视起来的，这